The format function returns a string containing an expression formatted according to instructions contained in a format expression. And if that sounds a little bit complicated, that's because it really can be. And here's what the format function looks like. You've got four possible arguments. Expression, which is the only required element to this particular function, by the way, can be any valid expression. Format can be a valid named or user-defined format expression. So, for example, the named formats can be any format that you would typically see for a format property, such as general number, currency, fixed, standard, percent, scientific, and there's a ton of other named formats. But these are just a few of the most common number ones. If your particular expression is referencing a date time field, for example, you can use any of the date time named formats, such as general date, long date, medium date, short date, long time, medium time, and short time. So those are just some examples of some sample named formats that you have to choose from. But you can also write your own custom format, where YYYY represents the year, Q can represent a quarter, M, month, Y, day of year, D, day, W, weekday, WW, a particular week number, H stands for hour, N stands for minute, and S stands for second. So you can write your own custom field by combining these user-defined formats with special characters. So there really is a lot that you can do within that format argument. Now the next function argument that we have here is the first day of week argument. And that particular argument, most of the time, is left blank. That's there mainly if you want to specify a particular first day of the week. If left blank, Sunday is assumed as the first day of the week. But if you wanted to make Monday the first day of the week, you could type in the value 2, or 3 for Tuesday, 4 for Wednesday, on up to 7 for Saturday. So that's what that first day of the week argument represents. The first week of year argument you can use to specify what the first week of the year is. If that field or that argument is omitted, Axis assumes that the week in which January 1st occurs is the first week of the year. If you were to type the number 2 in that function argument, Axis will then assume that the first week that has at least four days in the new year is the first week. If you type the number 3, Axis will start with the first full week of the year. And those are the arguments that make up the format function. Now let's jump into Axis and practice using the format function. So now we're back in our Picaroon Sales database and we're going to be using the query QRY new price, which looks exactly like this. This query is pulling in information from TBL Books where we have displayed our book ID, book title, release date, and the retail price. And then we have an expression that is taking the information stored in the retail price field and multiplying it by 1.2 to calculate a 20% increase in price. But calculated out, this is what our expression causes our data to look like. Not exactly pretty. Well, we're going to change that. Let's jump back into Design View. And just next to it, so we have something to compare, we're going to write out a reference to a brand new field called new price 2, and then colon. And we're going to type out that exact same expression, retail price times 1.2, but we're going to surround that expression with our format function. So let's type out format, open parentheses, and then our expression, which is going to be retail price, close bracket, times 1.2. So there's our expression and now typing a comma let's say we want to format that field as currency. Well for that we're going to use one of our pre-created or predefined named formats. So in quotation marks you do need the quotation marks type out the name currency. Close quote followed by close parentheses. 
So in essence, we are omitting the last two function arguments. We just want to accept the defaults for those arguments. So you don't necessarily have to type anything out. You can just close the parentheses and then access will assume the defaults for those last two function arguments. So with that written out, let's go and run our query. And here is what our function or our expression looks like. It takes the number that was stored and formats it as currency. Now notice how all of the numbers in this particular field are formatted to the left of the field. That is Access's way of telling users that the information stored in this field is being stored as text, not as a number, which doesn't make that much difference if you're calculating. You can still calculate with that field, but certain features that require a number field, like let's say the totals button up here, some of those features will not work. So if we wanted to sum up all of these prices, notice sum is not an option. And that's because that format function converts anything into text. So just keep that in mind when using the format function. So let's save this query. So now we're going to get a little bit more practice with our format function and use a query in here called QRY format function. And opening it up, here's what it looks like. We've got three fields displayed, book title, quantity, transaction date, which is pulling in all of our orders information from this database for a total of 3,030 records. But let's say we don't want to see every single record in our database. Let's say we only want this query to call up or show whatever last month's sales were. Now, every single time we open up this query, the month and the date is, is going to change. So we need to write an expression to take that into consideration. So let's go back into Design View. And what we're going to do is add a brand new field here that's going to format our transaction date field to the month. So opening up our expression builder, let's type out our format function. And our expression is going to reference our transaction date field and format that as a month or a number that represents the month. So just to show you what that looks like so far, I'm going to click OK and run the query. So this field so far is looking at that transaction date field and spitting back whatever the month is for that particular field. So March, April, May, and so on and so forth. Now jumping back into Design View, we're going to make this a little bit more complicated by adding some query criteria that's going to tell Access to only display the previous month. So we're going to be reusing that format function as criteria. But this time, instead of referencing the transaction date field, we're going to reference whatever the current date is or whatever now is. So our expression for that format function is now or the now function. Then we're going to type a comma and also tell Access we're going to format that as the month or quote M end quote and then close parenthesis. Now running that query, look what it does. Right now it's displaying only those records or 47 records with the number 10. And that's because, well, when I'm recording right now, it's October. So that's the month that's getting spit back. But I don't want the current month, I want last month. So jumping back in Design View, we're going to tack on minus 1 to that format expression. And when we run, now it displays only those records where 9 is the month. But currently our expression is showing us every single year that we have orders placed in our database, going all the way back to 2007. So now we need to add something else. We need to add another field, but this time it's going to format the transaction date to year. So brand new field here. Let's write out the expression for the format function. It's going to call up information stored in the transaction date field, but this time it's formatted as YYYY or a four-digit year. And then close quotes. And when we click OK, 
you can see that adds a new field that's just spitting back whatever the year is for each individual record. And now, same thing, let's jump back into Design View, and now we're going to add criteria to that particular field that's going to reference whatever the current year is. So beginning with that format function one more time and calling up the now function, comma, and YYYY for the year. And then close parenthesis to end the function. So now our criteria is telling Access to take whatever the current month is, minus one, and whatever the current year is. And that's our criteria for our query. And when we run it, we have a total of three records displaying, or three books sold last month. Not a very successful business this is. Now, since we have the transaction date here, we really don't need this information off to the right being displayed. So let's jump back in Design View, and we, we still need those fields there, because that's what is controlling what records are being displayed. But we just don't need to see that in our query results. So we can uncheck the Show box and run our query. And this query from now on will only display the sales from the previous month. So that's a slightly more complicated way to use that format function inside queries. Let's save this and close.